Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at some of the best features and changes expected to arrive with the release of the Windows 11 version 24H2, which it should arrive by the second half of 2024. I am making this video with the changes already available through the Windows Insider program, however the only feature I will be talking about and I won't be able to show are the changes for Windows Update, since these improvements are available under the hood and there is not an option that you can turn on and off but it's just worth mentioning. You can also check the video description for a link for a written article with the most up-to-date information about version 24H2. Okay, let's dive into the best features coming later this year for Windows 11. But before, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button to help YouTube show this video to more people. It doesn't cost anything to you and you will be helping the channel and supporting my work. First, let's talk about the new Windows setup experience, which is getting a much needed update with a cleaner and modern interface that you will notice when performing a fresh installation or upgrade using a USB bootable media. The company notes that all the features will continue to be supported, included the unattended support. Some of the options and the pages has been updated, but the overall experience remains the same. The interface even uses the same visuals elements from the legacy version. And one fun fact about this new update for the Windows setup is that we can actually trace back this actual design to previous releases of the operating system. Microsoft is just now making it available for version 24H2. So the process has changed a little bit. We get some options that now are getting their own pages, but overall everything still the same. The biggest difference on the options is that when you get to this page, now you get an option to choose what is it that you want to do with the setup and you have to agree that using this process will delete everything on the computer so you get an option to install windows 11 or you can restart your pc actually this process will look very familiar if you use the windows setup on the desktop to do an in-place upgrade I actually have a dedicated video that goes through all the little changes for the windows setup I will be leaving a link in the video description so you can check that video out. As part of this new feature update, Microsoft is also adding the sudo command to Windows 11, a feature that has been available on Unix-based operating systems such as Linux and Mac OS since the 1980s. sudo or super user do is a command that allows you to run elevator programs without running the Windows terminal as an administrator. You can perform many operations using this command, such as deleting a protected file, invoking elevated commands, and opening a new terminal to perform virtually any task. However, you have to enable this option manually, and you will do that through the settings app. More specifically, from the For Developers page. When you scroll down, you will you are going to see a new enable sudo setting, which you need to turn that on. Once you do that, you have to choose the option, and for most people, the inline option will be the best option. Actually, this is the option that works exactly the same as you were using the sudo command on Linux or Mac OS. So once the command is enabled, you can do different actions. So let's say that I want to delete this file. Of course, you can just click the delete button right here, but I can also open the terminal right here. Actually, this will make more sense if I actually copied the file and placed it on the uh, C drive. And that's because you need administrator rights to make any changes to this folder. So let's say that we are on command prompt and we want to view the files and we can see that we have the text file right here. And then if you use the, the delete command to delete the my text file.txt, you're going to see that the access has been denied. However, if we now use the sudo command, now the action has been completed successfully. And if we and if we run the dir command, we can see that the text file has been deleted. Another best feature coming to Windows. 11 version 24H2 is the new energy saver feature and you can see it right here. So energy saver is a new power saving mode that replaces the existing battery saver feature. It not only helps to extend the battery life on devices, but it also works to reduce energy usage 
on computers without a battery. The power saving mode is actually based on the battery saver feature and the power mode feature, meaning that it works in the same way by extending the battery life and reducing the energy usage by trading off system performance. Now, on a laptop or desktop computer with a battery backup, you can now use the always use energy saver to turn on and off the feature manually and you can also choose the battery percentage to turn on the feature automatically by default it's set to 30 percent now i just disconnected the battery backup from my computer and i restarted the settings app and as you can see for devices without a battery we still have the option but you can only turn it on and off automatically with this option right here. And that was a closer look at the energy saver mode on Windows 11. As part of the version 24H2, File Explorer is also getting a few improvements. For example, now the file manager offers a wizard for file compression using different formats. So let's say that you want to compress or archive this particular file when you right click on it and we use the compress to option, we get the different formats that we can use to create an archive. But if we go to the additional options, we get this new wizard that allows us to choose the archival format, including 7-zip, different types of tar, and the legacy or the one that we're used to, which is the zip format. When you choose the option that you want, you can choose from the different compression methods and you can choose the compression level. Let me just go really quick and show you the different compression methods available. And even SEP has different compression methods that you can use. You also have the option to retain the symbolic links, which is checked by default right here. However, the only caveat using this wizard is that you can work with archival formats that uses any type of encryption. And just like that, we get a 7-zip in this case using the wizard. File Explorer is making several improvements for this feature update. However, another interesting addition, it's on the context menu. And that is that now we get labels for the top options. I know this is a small change, but it will make a difference for users when they need to choose the option. I can't tell you how many times I hesitated trying to choose between cut and copy using this menu. And now it is just much easier. Version 24H2 will also make it easier to share and connect other devices to the same wireless network using a barcode. And to do that, when you connect to a wireless network, and let's say you want to share your connection with other people or other devices, you will need to enter the properties page. And actually the company moved up the setting right at the top of the properties page. And right here, when you click the show button, you will not only see the password for the wireless network that you're currently connected to, but there is also a barcode that you can scan with your phone or the device or the device that includes a camera app and that will give that device the connection to sign in into the wireless network. And this release, Microsoft is also updating the printer settings. So when you go to the properties for a particular printer, you will now see a new additional printer settings. And right here, you can do two things. You can rename the printer, which before you needed to access control panel. And while printing, you can now pause or resume print jobs right here without having to use another application or going to the legacy control panel. In this release, you can also configure the Windows protected print mode, which basically is a new universal print driver, but it's only been designed to work with Mopria printers. This feature lets you connect a printer to Windows 11 without the need of third-party software. So once you set up this configuration on the computer, the printer will just work. So, and to do that, you need to come to the printers and scanner page, and then you will see the feature right here. And you just need to click the setup button, and this will turn on the printer mode. And as you can see on the description, this will remove the printers that are not compatible with the new driver. So make sure that you have a compatible printer before turning these on. Now let's jump into the accessibility section because right here we have a new hearing aids 
page because the system now supports hearing aid devices as long as they support the Bluetooth load energy audio technology. Once you pair the device, user can stream audio, take calls, and it is possible to control different presets ambient sounds and other experience enhancements. But it's important to know that you might have access to the page, but you will only see the settings and the features if you have a compatible hearing aid device connected to your computer. So as you can see on my computer, I don't have a supported Bluetooth LE audio hearing device. So pretty much the page is empty. Microsoft is also updating the widgets dashboard with a new rail on the left side that allows you to switch between the news feed and your widgets and some of the options has been moved around for example to access the settings you will need to go to the bottom left and from here you can add and remove different widgets configure notifications and more so for example you can use this setting to turn off the fee and then you only have access to your widgets. Now, it is interesting to note that as you can see, we no longer have the option to use the dashboard in full screen mode. Other improvements to the widgets experience is now that the icon on the taskbar will include a batch notification. So you can see the numbers of the notifications that you might have missed. And when you open the dashboard, you will see a widget letting you know all the notifications that you might have missed. Microsoft is also planning to change the way that updates work on Windows 11. So you no longer have to reboot the computer every time that you need to install a security update. The new update mechanism is not new, it's called hot patching and it is available on the Windows Server version of the operating system. And it works by patching the code that is already running on memory, avoiding the need to restart the process, ensuring higher availability and reducing disruptions. The company plans to use this method to deploy the monthly security updates without requiring a restart to apply the changes. However, there is a caveat is that this doesn't mean that you will never have to reboot your computer again since the hot patching mechanism requires a baseline update that continues to mandate a restart every several months. Also remember that this new method is for security updates only. This doesn't apply for critical or feature updates. I'm really hoping that at least this last feature makes it through for the final version of 24H2. As I said at the beginning, this video highlights the best feature that are available so far through the Windows Insider program. It is known that Microsoft is making a big push on AI integration with version 24H2, but at the time of this recording, either these features are not available or have been disabled temporarily, so they are not included on this video. Also, I'm not including the updates for applications since they're not technically part of the operating system. Remember to check the video description for the link to the written guide with all the up-to-date information for this particular release. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet, and I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.